So let's jump over to InDesign and give this a shot. So I have the original document that I was working with open still. I'm going to reset my workspace. And then I've also opened the bookmark starter file, which is part of the activity that you'll be working on in this module. And I just want to demo what we just covered in the lecture. So the first thing that we can do is if we have a file and we have been using our swatches panel effectively, so you can see here that all of the colors that I've been using in the project are saved to the swatches panel. They're saved as process build colors, so I shouldn't expect to print this with seven colors of ink. I'm just going to use cyan, magenta, yellow, and black to create all the different colors. Um, before we go further, I don't know about you, but it drives me nuts when there's too many frame edges and there's too many colors in the design, so it's competing. I turn them off using the view menu, extras and hide frame edges. As a general rule, I always like to have the frame edges on, but in this specific existent, uh, instance, it is difficult to kind of see what's going on. Okay, now that we have that, if I have gone through the entire process of creating this design and I thought it was really cool and I thought that, you know, uh, that eggplant colored shoe with the bright pink toe was great, but I decide that you know what, it's really hard to see that eggplant on the background. So I have dark purple around the edges and then that eggplant or red purple color on the boot. If you just double click any color swatch that you're using, as long as you have properly linked all the colors that you're using to this or synced it to this color, you can come in here and you can change the color that you're using. So if I select OK right now, it will change it to this brighter red color. But better yet, if you hit the preview option, you can see it in real time and the contrast is now better, I can see the outline on the shoe. If I'm happy with that, I can leave that, but maybe now I'm not happy with the magenta color or the pink color. You can double click on that and you can modify that color as well. And so you can figure out the color that you want for that area on the shoe. Let's say that you have created these color swatches and these are, uh, before I move forward, if you're going to change it to like a muddy brown color, don't leave the color label as pink. We'll call this a light brown. And so now that we've done that, we, we're, we're saying something's more accurate to the color that we're using. But let's say that you create these colors and you decide that these are the colors that must be used in the entire branding project for whatever this is. This happens to be a bookmark, but maybe there is a stationary package that goes along with it and you want to make sure that the letterhead and the envelope and the business cards all have the same colors. Whatever colors you select or you highlight on your swatches panel can be saved via the option fly out menu. So you can hit the option fly out menu and choose save swatches. When you do that, you need to make sure that you know where you're saving it. I'm just going to toss it on the desktop and I'm going to let the file name be the name of the ASE file. And so I'll hit save and now if we minimize and we move over to our desktop, you can see that it saved a .ase file. The .ase file will only save solid swatches, and so if you have any gradients or tints, it's not going to work. But to make sure that somebody has these seven colors to use in their design project, you can send them the .ase file. And notice that when I go back to that document we were using in the last demo video, um, it has all the colors that we were using for this project, but it does not have the specific ones we want for our, for our new project, the seven swatches that are on this swatches panel. You can easily load them by hitting the option flyout menu and choose load swatches. Find wherever you saved your .asc and then you can open them and they will all come in exactly as you had them. So I had them in as process CMYK colors, they came in as process CMYK colors. So now you could select all the other colors that you don't want and you choose the trash can and get rid of them. Now every once in a while, you'll decide that you want to get rid of a color that you are using uh, but you don't know how to get rid of it without InDesign giving you an error. So for example, if I want to get rid of this blue color, if I don't like the color of the shoelaces, uh, you can delete it if you want to. But because I try to delete a color that's in use, you'll get a prompt that says, well, you can delete it if you want to, but you have to replace it with something. I can't just remove all of that color from the design. And so if it's easier, to double click and modify that swatch and make it the right color for your needs, you can do that. But sometimes it's easier to use the color picker on the tools panel and to kind of click around and plug and chug until you find the right color for your needs. So maybe it's this new pink color. 
once you have that new color as a, a fill or a stroke, whichever's in the foreground on your swatches panel, you can create a new swatch. You can modify that however you would normally. So I want to name it, we'll call it light pink. So now that I have the color I want to replace the shoelaces with, if you select the color that you're currently using for the shoelaces and delete it, you can say, well, I know I'm using it, but replace it with the right color. That pink was easier to select for me by using the color picker, and so I'd rather use the color picker, get the right color, and then replace and delete the blue swatch all at once. And because all the shoelaces were linked to the blue color swatch, meaning when I created the item, I selected it and chose the color directly from the swatches panel, they all change in unison when I delete the swatch and say, hey, replace that color with this new light pink color.